Hi everyone, Jonathan J. Reinhardt here from Wargaming Recon, and I'm here with another pandemic coffee break for you. So today is Monday, March 23, uh, 2020, and um, since it's a coffee break, oh, this is actually tea, but we're going to have some tea here. Mm. I drink um, decaf Earl Grey, and you might notice my mug, which this is not product placement, we're not supported by them, but love Tim Hortons. Very sad when I discovered it was no longer up in Maine, and uh, sadly, it's nowhere nearby, but got my nice Tim Hortons travel mug. I got some decaf Earl Grey in it. There's been a lot going on um, since we talked on Friday. First of all, I've shaved, so that was pretty nice. And then also, last time we were talking about some things that we've done and progress that we've made about some of the um, some of the uh, projects that we're working on. So I want to show you all what I've done, and I'm pretty excited about this. I was working on the tent barracks for the Yamashiro Mountain Fort, and let me just get it situated properly. And it's done. <laughs> it's a beautiful little kit. Uh, last time I asked people in the live stream if I should go ahead and, you know, do any sort of basing for it. So what I decided was, uh, let me take the roof off so you can see inside. Um, so what I decided was I was going to cheat. And the lighting's not great, so you can't see terribly, but here. So you can see near the entrances here on the sides. I actually use some of my basing stuff that I like to use. So I used, um, I use Games Workshop products, Citadel. I use Sterling Mud, which we'll try to get some better photos online because I'm sorry about the lighting. You can't really tell. I use Sterling Mud as a base and then I use Battle Mire, which gives a little more texture and definition. So I basically use that to build up inside the front right up here. You can see in these two areas. So that's basically Sterling Battle Mire that I put over the Sterling Mud. And I'll get some better pictures and put them up on our Facebook page for everyone. And then I went ahead and I used a variety of tufts um, to put on. So there's a combination of Leadbeer's tufts, which I love, along with Gamer's Grass. So I highly recommend the Gamer's Grass as well. You can get that from Things in the Basement. This is a Things in the Basement kit that you can pick up. And it's not perfect uh, with how I've done it, but I like it. And it's my final one. So when you put the roof on, it's perfectly okay for the tabletop. There you go. And so there you go. And you have it right there. So this is my big accomplishment. I did have to use the um, clothespins <laughs> for all over here. So it got really interesting in the front with doing that. Uh, but it was a neat little challenge. I'd love to know what you are working on and what kind of stuff you've accomplished and how you're dealing with the pandemic. So um, the whole kind of gist of doing this pandemic coffee break is that I work from home. I work uh, thankfully he allows me to work from home and pays me. I know not everyone is so lucky. And um, because we're all either isolated and sequestered or whatever, I don't want us to feel that we're alone. So the pandemic coffee break kind of allows us to kind of get them together, talk about things that we're doing. It doesn't have to be just hobby stuff, but just anything and how we're kind of getting by with the pandemic and just kind of getting through. So that was one thing that I've done that's really exciting to me. Um, before I talk about some other stuff I've done, I do want to mention that this, sorry, that's my heat. And one of the things about live stream, the heat will come on on like a podcast recording where we <laughs> try to deal with that. So one of the things is that there's a lot of conventions that are being canceled and it's about to get really loud in here, people. So I do apologize for that. But it 
um, has resulted in a lot of conventions getting canceled. And there are a lot of vendors who go there, which are not getting any sales. And so the Historical Miniatures Gaming Society, HMGS, they're the people who put on Historicon and Fallen, Cold Wars, all that kind of stuff. They have created a whole page devoted to vendors that would have been at upcoming events for them. And they are not going to be there because, of course, they're not holding the events. And so on this page, and um, we'll have a link to it as well, you can find a bunch of different vendors that are giving special discounts. And so there's everything from Casemate, which is giving 40% off titles on a link page. You have to use a special code. 891-21. You could also check out who's DreamPod9 is doing a March Madness sale that runs until midnight on March 31st, 2020. We have Michigan Toy Soldier. Love buying from them. And that is 20% off using promo code 1919.19. That's 191919 from March 25th to the 29th. Miniature Building Authority, 15% across the board sale, which is really cool. Who else do we have that uh, I'd like to point out? Oh, Wargaming Company, sponsor of our show, has 25% off everything through the uh, end of March 2020. So that's March 23 to um, the end of March. Links to the basement, 10% off all of their laser cut kits. You have to use a coupon code, hashtag stay home it's good until june 30th so be sure to check that out and oh here's another one winged hussa publishing 25 percent off checkout code cwad20 so you can get some cool discounts if you do that and speaking of discounts last night i sent out an extra thank you to our kickstarter backers so you receive discount coupon codes for either uh, for TSR Games, for uh, Things in the Basement, and Cigar Box Battle. Depending on each person, you might have got a different discount. It kind of correlated to your level of backing, but it's an extra thank you uh, for your support. And I also want to thank TSR Games. I want to thank Things in the Basement and Cigar Box Battle for their support and help with that. If you back the Kickstarter and you have not seen an email from me, it would have been Jonathan at WargamingRecon.com. If you have not seen that email with your discount coupon codes, please get in touch with me because I want to get them to you. So that is something else that I want to make sure that you know. And we also sent an update to our Kickstarter backers as well. Last Friday, I unfortunately misspoke and said that you'd have a new podcast episode on Monday, meaning today. <laughs> with this pandemic Time is kind of like wibbly wobbly, <laughs> timey wimey for me, and so <laughs> each day is like living five days of my life, and it's just has my mind going like crazy, and as such, that means I was wrong. So the podcast episode does not come out today; it comes out a week from today. I'm so sorry about that, uh, but it just goes to show not only my little woo with all of the stuff, but that we know. Um, we keep on working on stuff. So we have the episode uh, going to be ready for people to get. It'll come out to Patreon backers. Go to um, patreon.com slash working recon. You can find us there. You can get the episode. And then also it'll be coming out to everyone else through the usual means as well. I want to talk a little bit about MDF because last time I asked all of you what my next project should be. And we put a poll up on Twitter and had um, things going on to get your input. And it came down between a few different things. And unfortunately for Jamie, <laughs> Chimney Lost, the industrial chimney, was not chosen. But what was chosen is actually, I'm going to show, I have to be really careful because I've had some trouble with this kit, mainly because of me. It's the Russian outhouse. <laughs> and I thought this would be super easy to do. And it's not because it's a little fiddly. And part of the problem is, you have to assemble every single wall and then each component inside. So you got to line it up just right and glue it and do all that. And if you're all thumbs like I am, it can result in it being a little fiddlier than you would normally like. So it's all on me. It's not on the kit. It's just, I have issues. Uh, I do want to note, I have not put the front piece in yet. Hi, Dave. Thank you for joining us here. 
I was talking some MDF kits. So I've not glued the front piece yet because I want to be able to get in and do some dry brushing and some detail work on here. I mean, they're going to go poo and pee, right? So it doesn't really matter how much detail. I'm not going to get gross or anything. Uh, but there's that. And a neat thing, but a little bit of confusion actually, is there's extra detail on the sides when you actually get this that don't appear in the instructions. So the pictures don't match 100%. And so that's just something to be mindful of. And when, good morning, Dave. Thank you for joining us. And when I was working on, you know, go ahead and say, okay, we're going to do this. I actually talked with Jorg and I was like, well, Jorg, you know, what should we do? Because this is, do you have any input? What do you think? And Jorg said, well, you know, a lot of those Russian kits you mentioned, you can just paint them all the same color at the same time. <laughs> And get them done quicker. I was like, oh, I like the way you think. So not only is the outhouse being done, but the livestock buildings, I sprayed those and also did my ink washes and I did some fencings. Hey, Nathan, uh, it's nice to see you. Thank you for joining the chat and the live stream. But then I also tackled some fencing and I want to point out something really, It's here's a hobby tip, okay? So we're going to get nice and close. You see all these little openings, right? There's like little holes, little circles, and the spaces in between the fencing. Makes it extra authentic, right? But one of the things with laser cut kits, it doesn't matter where you get them from. This is not a knock on things in the basement. But pieces get stuck in, right? It doesn't matter how big or small the hole is. But because these are extra slender, it's a little harder to get at them. And so I use... You could use anything, hobby knife or whatever. My hobby knives aren't the sharpest tools in the shed. So I use something else. And this is actually a thing I picked up for myself, which was on our um, holiday gift guide uh, for 2019. It's a set of Pick Snore, and we'll have a, a link to it as well. Pick Snore tweezers. And these are actually intended for people who want to do some facial care stuff. <laughs> but there's a variety of different tweezers. But one of the neat things about them is, let me get my hand behind it to kind of, they're super thin. So you can take these tweezers and you can poke each of those little spots. And get all the stuff out. So these work really great. I also use these when I'm doing tufts. So like with let's pull it back the tent barracks here right if i want to put any tufts on i'll grab some tweezers i grab the tuft and i smoosh it in it's just i find it a whole lot easier to work with it if i'm using these and these i got on amazon they were pretty affordable you could use any kind of tweezers but these are great um some people like them if they're going to try to pop pimples or things like that um, that's not why I got them. I got them for this, but you know, whatever makes you happy is uh, what you should do. So uh, I got a lot of extra debris out from the fencing and some people would just recycle it because it's wood or, you know, throw it in the trash or whatever, but I save it because then I take it and I use it in with my um, fine ballast and my flock Hey, John, thank you for joining us. So I use all these offcuts, basically, and these debris. I put it in, and it turns into rubble. So it gives a little extra texture when I'm doing actual full basing anywhere. So I think that's just a really neat thing. I've gotten in the habit of doing that over the past four months. You might hear uh, the baby crying. She's upset about something as she's home with my wife and I as we're trying to work from home today. And uh, uh, so you can save all these little offcuts that you get out of here and use them for basing and just put it in, make a little mixture. I have little Tupperware containers, basically not Tupperware, not brand, brand, but I have little plastic containers. I put it in, I put my combination of ballast and all the kind of stuff together. And I just go, so I have a bunch of these depending on what kind of theming I'm doing project. So I, I know like feudal Japan uses this and you know, trees use this or whatever and that I have. So it just adds a little bit extra. And since it's wood and since at least these are already painted, you kind of get some of the color already uh, in there, which is kind of cool. So it can be all sorts of stuff. It's just a nice shortcut for all of that, for things that you can do. And it's something I really like. 
And I also want to mention, some of you might go out and buy like those expensive GW tools, hobby tools. Don't do it, right? Or Army Painter or whoever, just don't do it. Save you money. Um, but it is helpful if you're putting like Sterling Battlemire or Mud or any of this kind of stuff on. You want like more of a, a scoopy thing. So I actually got, uh, they're made for clay and for artists. Um, they're metal. And I think metal is really the best way to go. But they're tools, like sculpting kind of tools. So I have one that's like nice and thin and I just scoop out the stuff. I put it on and then I kind of smooth it and you can texture it as you want. So it's just really cool. Dental tools would also be a cool way to go about it. Uh, and you can use things like hemostats or whatever for that kind of stuff. So just find other ways to repurpose stuff. You can probably save yourself some money and they'll last longer than better made. And you can get them uh, elsewhere and do that to support what you do. And I think we're going to have a lot more time to do it because I'm hearing that here in the state of Massachusetts, our governor has ordered, to, as of tomorrow, I believe Tuesday, that non-essential businesses have to be closed. And I think they're recommending that people stay home. So please double check your news sources for that if you live in Massachusetts or for whatever communities um, happen to be near you or in which you live. Just make sure you get official information about all that and not just because I said it on a live stream or because, you know, Karen said it on Facebook or whatever. Uh, so make sure you do that. Um, I'd love to know what projects you guys are working on. Oh, what do you guys drink? Are you coffee? Are you tea? Uh, I know people feel strongly one way or the other. Some people do both. Uh, whatever makes them happy. Decaf, half calf, regular. Oh my. <laughs> Someone playing some, with some blocks, I guess. Mm. I do love my Earl Grey. But unlike Captain Picard, while I drink it hot, I drink it a little differently. It's Earl Grey hot with cream <laughs> and two splenda. <laughs> uh, that's just how I like it. So we have these projects going on, making headway. I think I might even send out another newsletter for people. And uh, there's actually a lot of buildings uh, still to work on. I think that's going to be a push for me. Minis just don't excite me as much to paint and assemble. Some people do, and they love it, which is great. And um, other people do not. And I want to just mention that last time that um, had mentioned that the live stream would also, and I'm sorry, I'm just pulling it up, uh, live stream would also get put onto YouTube. And so we actually got a comment on Friday's live stream, which I'm just trying to pull up so I can um, um, share with the, all of you. So here we go. Um, it's from iPink Today. It says, uh, this is on our pandemic coffee break, March 3, 2020. March 3. That's not even right. I got to fix that. Sorry. That date is wrong. Um, it says, hey, Jonathan, it is me, Creepy Hollow Mike. Make the inside of the thing. So Mike's talking about this kit right here. And he says, make the inside of the thing more like a barn inside, and the edges use the tufts as more sun would be on the edges. You can use almost any household seasoning to pass as dried hay. And well, cow dung, you can dry brush it up to the colors you want. That is great advice, Mike. Thank you for that. And, you know, I, I suppose, like, th this is in the field, right? And you're in feudal Japan. There's going to be animal poop everywhere or people poop. I mean, there may not have been as many livestock as it were, but there were some. Uh, and people poop and things. So the inside could be muddier. And honestly, I probably would have done it, except the stuff I like to use is expensive. And most of this is just going to be where models are going to go. So I, don't, you could do it, and it's fantastic advice. But I'm just choosing to not do it, <laughs> is what it is. Hey, Mark, thank you for joining us this morning. I got more people popping in. So uh, I like that. I hope you all have your beverages for the pandemic. I don't know why I call it the coffee break. I mean, when I'm at work, I go to coffee break, but I don't drink the coffee. I bring my tea, and I have it. And unlike YouTube videos, I'm not spilling tea, as it were, on anyone. We're just here to support one another. I do love my tea, though. I really do. Um, 
it's good stuff. So been doing that. I've been reading more of, of Noble House, which we talked about last time. Really great game. And watching more of The Last Kingdom. My um, infant daughter was all excited this morning while I was giving her her milk after she ate some breakfast. Uh, she was drinking her milk and she's turned towards the TV because I was watching The Last Kingdom. And she's really enthralled. And my wife was less than enthused. She's like, that's not appropriate for an infant. And probably not. But I mean, the baby's a year old, and one, what's she gonna know? And two, it's the history of the formation of England. Yeah, it's you know fiction, but it's based on true fact, and she can learn a thing or two. So maybe something will stick. Maybe she'll learn to learn some history and maybe get into this kind of stuff. So I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but that's just me speaking. So <laughs> whatever. Uh, I don't know what you guys are watching or reading or doing, uh, but I've also been playing some Ultimate General Civil War uh, through Steam, which is a lot of fun. And just trying out different scenarios and doing different things. Playing some SimCity. I did that last night. That was a lot of fun. And then actually, and, and this is a plug. We're not paid for this plug, but this is a plug anyway. Uh, so about three weeks ago or so, my wife signed us up for this uh, subscription box kind of thing and it's called misfits market and you get basically this ugly produce so it's like things that like you if you were at the store you might not want to buy because like maybe the carrots look funny or whatever they, they're perfectly fine but they just look a little weird or whatever uh, and so she signed us up to get a box every other week of this produce and you don't know exactly what you're getting uh, so it's kind of exciting but also some people might not like that but it's all organic produce. It's all really good. And you get a list and you told like, you could get whatever from this list. So there's all sorts of stuff. And so we did it and we got a bunch of stuff that was amazing. And my wife made some really great stuff out of it. And then we just got another box. We were supposed to get it on Saturday and it got delayed and came yesterday. So then my wife yesterday made soup, which was fantastic with this Misfits Market box of produce. It's just really, really good. So she made... Um, it had kale in it and carrots. Uh, and there were beans that we've had, like a variety of beans and um, barley and stuff. And then what else did she put in it? She put, uh, I'm trying to find my picture. Oh, um, onion. Oh, yeah, kale, barley, beans, uh, like kidney beans and stuff like that. Uh, carrots and onions. Uh, hi, Joanne. It's nice to see you. So she did all this and put it into soup and it was so so good that uh even our eldest really liked it and our eldest doesn't love kale uh when we've had it before she feels it's a little too better but this time it was not bitter at all so i don't know why it wasn't better this time and it was before but it just it was really really good soup so we like that york thank you for joining us and um this soup was amazing and one of the cool things about uh being at home and working from home because of the pandemic, it, you got to look for the positives wherever you can, right? One of the cool things is it's a chance to cook more. And so my wife been cooking and this Misfits box is amazing. So you pay, it's like 22 American per box for what we get. You could get a gigantic family size thing, but like for what we get is 22 American. And we figured it out with the first box with all the stuff we got, all the produce and everything, and all the, the meals that my wife made, and how many servings, you know, from people, and how many times we got to use it or whatever, it came out to like two bucks or two dollars and change a person per serving, basically, per meal. And that was fantastic. So, like, my wife made all sorts of really delicious stuff. It's very, very good. You get uh, lots of protein from it, you get all sorts of stuff. And then you can also order extra things that you can get at a discount. So you can get like canned goods or they have a bunch of things that you get from their uh, website. And so actually um, I have a discount code I'm going to share with all of you that'll give you 25% off if you use it, which is pretty cool. So let me just pull up my discount code so I can tell you just in case you're interested in it. And um, I mean, if you are great, if not, whatever, but uh, we love it. And when I come across a good thing, I like to tell people. So, if you go to misfitsmarket.com and you want to use code, um, here we go. It's all capital letters, cookwme-ma-2020. 
the number two LZW. So if you use that, and um, that'll give you 25% off of your order, which is pretty cool. So check it out. Uh, they don't sponsor me or the show or anything, but we just really like them. They do stuff's really good. Uh, so if you're into that kind of thing, give it a try. And it's something you can do while you're at home during the pandemic. So no matter when you're watching this last year, we stream it live, but then it gets recorded and saved and put on YouTube and also on Facebook and so forth. And we link to it on Twitter as well. Uh, get in touch. Like to know what you're eating, what you're cooking, what, what you're doing, especially if you're in a community where not only are you not able to go out to a restaurant to eat in the restaurant, but more and more of them are not allowing you to do takeout from them or order for delivery. So what are you doing at home to uh, feed yourself and get by? And uh, what new things are you trying and interesting kind of foods and all that sort of stuff? I'd love to know what projects you're working on. I talked about my troubles because I'm me with the note house, <laughs> which I feel is really fitting <laughs> with the pandemic because of all these runs on toilet paper, which I don't understand. Yes, you need it to whip your bottom, but like, you don't need as much of it as people are buying. So I really don't understand the whole toilet paper thing. I'm told it's psychological because of like the size and softness. It's comforting or I don't know, but it's toilet paper. Like why toilet paper? I get the soap. I get the sanitizer thing. I understand that, but I don't understand why people are freaking out and hoarding toilet paper. I really, someone please explain it to me. I don't get it. It just, I don't let's hoard dice. Let's go and buy a million dice from someone or games grass. Let's buy tons of that or lead beer stuffs or MDF kits from your favorite MDF company models from wherever, like hoard this, like why toilet paper? I really don't understand it. I just, I don't. So I don't know. Uh, that's just me, whatever. Um, or oh, one last thing, actually, I'm a little scattered today as well. Uh, I just, I have to seal this and I'm curious and maybe one of you will know, I'm not sure how the, um, I, I tend to use Tester's dull coat, but I'm not sure how the uh, matte varnish is going to work with this crinkle paper. So if any of you happen to know, please tell me because I'd love to know. But I'm worried that it's going to make the crinkle paper, I don't know, too brittle or, or something. So I am hesitant about sealing it with this. And I just, I don't know. But I think this came out pretty well. This is my final Fuel Japanese kit for the Yamashiro Mountain Fort. So that's exciting to me. And um, you can share pictures of what you're working on. We have a Facebook fan group that you can join and check out and uh, share whatever you're working on in there as well. I know some of you have been working your way through stuff. We have more articles coming out on the site. The podcast comes out, podcast episode rather, comes out a week from today. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I'm sorry again for um, my misspeaking last time but it is true that it comes out uh, a week from today officially now <laughs> so you'll be able to uh, get that and check it out and see it and we are also trying to um, to share any sales and discounts that we come across that maybe you want to uh, check out if you have some disposable income to get hobby stuff that'll keep you busy and um, help you with some mental health for as is and um there's that we talked last time about the hobby bunker about what they're doing you know because of here in massachusetts although hobby bunker ships internationally you can't go to the store by uh, locally so if you want stuff from them you go today or tomorrow i think by noon eastern standard time otherwise i think matt's gonna try to do mail order by himself <laughs> so uh give that a try as you will and then also, I believe Warlord Games, and I forgot to mention this last time, but I believe they are doing a different um, special offer, sale or whatever, every day. So if you go to their website, and it's warlordgames.com, uh, they'll tell you what deals there are. And I'm just pulling up today's just so we can see what that is. Ah, no wrong thing. Sorry. I clicked and thought I clicked on where it says community deals and it brought me to something else. Okay, so here we go. So today they've marked down, actually they've marked down a lot of stuff. So this is all for bolt action right now that they've marked down today. So you can get uh, a German Grenadier Army 
for ninety six dollars instead of one hundred and fourteen. It's a starter army. Uh, looks like it comes with grenadiers, a here support group, and a Panzer. Uh, you can get a Chiha platoon. Uh, that's three tanks for the Japanese for sixty. Churchill troop also three tanks for sixty. Cromwell tanks three of them for sixty. M eighteen Hellcat platoon three, which is three of them for sixty. Hetzer Zugs for sixty. An IS two platoon also for sixty. M ten tank destroyer platoon, which is three tanks for sixty. These are plastic. You could get. The U.S. Armored Car Squadron, which is the M8 or M20 Greyhound Scout Car Squadron, for 60. Martyr Zugs, uh, 60. Panzer III Zugs, 60. Uh, again, three tanks in each of those. Or U.S. Armored Platoon, which is three tanks for $60. So depending on if you need some tanks, or you want to start German Grenadiers for uh, um, bolt action, you could get some good deals there from Warlord Games, and then they just have all sorts of special offers and other stuff that they're doing as well. Uh, you can get a British Starter Army for Black Powder. I get a Continental Starter Army for half off. Uh, you can get a Continental Starter Army and get another one for half off. Or a French Starter Army for the Waterloo Campaign and get a British Starter Army for half off. Um, so if you do the British and Continental Army bundle, it's 152. If you do the Continental and Continental Starter Armies, it's 204. And the Waterloo campaign is 204. And then what else? Oh, they got um, a Blood Red Skies deal going on where you can get um, some Blood Red Skies. You can get some Cruel Seas ships and some bolt action tanks and units for 180. Uh, and they have other things like that. They got some Hail Caesar stuff too. The early city state of for 240 or early state city state of Lagash for 240 you get some stuff and freebies in there as well so all sorts of cool extra things well that's it for the pandemic coffee break here for Monday March 23 2020 thank you so much for watching this and seeing what we're doing and all that kind of stuff Please be sure to follow us on social media. Get in touch if you need us for anything. We're here. We're going to keep on putting out episodes for everyone and content for all of you, whether it's articles or videos or whatever. Be smart. Stay safe. Be sure to keep your distance from people. Work remotely. Do whatever you can to stay healthy, stay safe. And let's just try to take care of our mental wellness and see what we can do to get through this pandemic, all of us together, but from a distance. So... You know the drill. No matter how busy you are, no matter what, how much time you're spending trying to figure out where you want to buy hobby stuff at a discount, you know that you gotta, you need to, you have to. That's right. Keep on gaming. <laughs>